Okay, on this part, uh, I was asked to do a video on, on smoking and then canning salmon. So, one of the first steps is that, of course, you gotta sanitize and clean up your jars and everything else like that. So, we add a little bit of water on the top. We'll set them out here in a second, get them all dried off. So, there's approximately two cases on each top and bottom and then here's the second part so what we'll do is get these all washed up which is they're washed up and now we're going to get them pulled out so the other thing is too is that now i have already boiled the lids and and everything and you want to put a little bit of vinegar in there to um, clean them off so they don't stain on top of that too, just to disinfect everything. Just kind of like when you're doing with your jars. And then we'll move them over here and then have everything on the table. Have some of the ingredients and some of the salmon ready to go. And then we'll get that going over. We'll get the jars put out and get everything situated. Now, at this point, I have um, unloaded all of the all the jars and everything to give you an idea there's four cases there and I'll be pulling these all out and putting them back on the towel and if we come back over here you'll see that I'll be dumping all the lids and everything out too that we sanitized and boiled so everything is now sanitized and boiled and now we're ready to start laying everything out to have the jars on the on the towel and ready to go and as you can see the salmon and everything is all over here so the next step we'll be taking this all apart laying it all out and then we'll come back to the the next part that we want to add so the next part is that we're going to lay all the jars out get them dried up a little bit and then we're going to put this the, the seals and the, the lids and everything back out to get them dried off and then uh, the next step I'll be showing everybody is the marinade or brine that I use while I'm doing all this. So for the smoked salmon. So that so will be the next one. So I'll get these all laid out and I'll show everybody how we get these done done up right now. And then how to get the brine set up. All right. Like I said before, uh, we're skipping to the next, well not skipping, we're going to the next step of the marinade uh, the first thing i'll do is fill the water approximately i don't know about a quarter of the way up on my can and normally i can handle probably maybe three salmon depending on the size of the fish i guess so so once i fill the water the next thing i'll do is i'll add my brown sugar now one of the things about brown sugar is uh, let's see I, I at first I was using the dark brown sugar and I was like oh yeah it's cool you know and before I was getting any kind of guidance as to what what kind of brown sugar I should use so um, I was using the dark kind and what was happening is that I was using it it turned my salmon just dark like I, and everybody's like oh what is that like is it a baby Ruth or something but <laughs> I was like no, but uh, so what? Well, after a while, I was using um, uh, molasses. I think it was dark brown sugar, molasses, and it tasted really. I don't know. I I don't know how to describe it. It wasn't great though. So it wasn't something where I'd be like, I would be like, let's go into the uh, special dinner and show it off. And that wasn't what was happening. So got rid of the molasses substituted <clears throat> maple syrup for it and then added brown sugar so my camera fell down earlier so I was previously I had dumped all the brown sugar into into the brine so um, I've already had added that so that's where we're at and I kind of like to it and, and what the brown sugar does is it immediately sinks to the bottom so you kind of constantly got to move it around and bring it back up and one of the ways you can break down your brown sugar is having your rice vinegar uh, uh, to put it in there. And you don't need to put very much in there. Probably like a cup, maybe a teaspoon. So 
I don't really measure things. So if you're asking me like if it's how many cups, how many teaspoons, I'm like, I don't do that. I back off on it if it's too much or I add if it's not enough when I'm trying something. And my problem is when I'm doing uh, brines or, or something new, I go full bore with it. It's like, it's all in like, you know, uh, I put, I will do five fish or something and then do it and then all of a sudden you're like, oh wow, I should not have done that. Um, it's something I'm trying to work on, but <laughs> I'm, I feel confident about by myself, but so I put at least about, uh, probably, we'll go right there. It feels like there's my teaspoon. And then <clears throat> you'll want to mix that around. And that kind of helps break down the brown sugar. So uh, we won't get to that quite yet, but we'll just kind of like want to get it around, start getting it moving around. And don't forget that you need to, when it's, when you're putting, whether whatever you're brining, it could be your salmon, your your elk, your jerkies, your roast, whatever you're doing, don't forget that brown sugar will immediately sink. It's like a sinker, it goes right down to the bottom. So you gotta, when you're doing your brine, you constantly gotta be spinning it around, uh, moving it around and getting everything underneath. So with that being said, the next thing I like to do is my soy sauce. Now a lot of people say it tastes like maple syrup, it tastes like this and that, and, and it's true if you, the shortcut to saving money with teriyaki sauce, to, if you want teriyaki sauce, the shortcut is just basically to throw water, your brown sugar, and then throw soy sauce, heat it up, stir it around, and then let it set and cool down for 15 minutes or so, however long it takes. And then, bam, you have your teriyaki sauce. That's basically what we're making, but I'm not doing the heat up process to to make it combine together. So, um, plus it's cheaper. When you get a big thing of soy sauce, it's like four bucks, and then you have your brown sugar. It's like two dollars or something, uh, depending on if you if, where you go, I guess. But uh, to continue on what I was talking about, so this is what this is what I do, anyways. I mean, I mean, if that's what you want to do, uh, I but I don't do that. I choose not to do it. So I'll probably only put, since I'm only doing a couple fish or something, I, I'm actually only doing like three or four fish, I don't know. And I don't want it to be filled up. So I'm only gonna use half of this. I'm only gonna use half of this soy sauce. And if you don't take that lid off, it does not pour very good. It's like, it's like shrapnel. Soy sauce shrapnel going everywhere. But, if you take it off, I only want to use about half. I don't want it to be salty and, and kill the vibe and whatnot. So my next step is, is that, now one of the things too is with your maple syrup. Man, I love maple syrup, by the way. The thing about maple syrup is, remember when I was saying about how it gets all, um, like when I was using the brown sugar and then the, uh, I stop talking concentrate so I don't cut myself but when I was using the molasses and that man it just turned it brown and chalky but man it's the opposite when you use maple syrup it's sticky and it pops I always say it in all my videos it pop, makes it pop like it gives it a high definition color to it uh, so I don't like I said we're not using we're not going all out so I'm only gonna use half of this Look at those pouring skills when it comes to that. All right, that's probably about half. And then, and this is really good. I love marinating anything in maple syrup. It is so good. I do my jerky the same way with a special brine. I do the exact same brine with everything I do, the jerky, and the, but I just add flakes. I add just different, different seasonings to it and whatnot. So, uh, those, that's the next thing. The last thing is, is my um, hickory smoke, liquid smoke. This is an option. I mean, you don't have to do it or whatnot, but I like to do it because man, I love the way it smells. I'm just like, mmm. That's all I do is like, mmm, it smells good. Yeah, it smells good. So then my last thing is, is that I'll probably put it, all right about that much. It, you don't. You don't have to whole, put a whole bunch in there, but now, now it's really sticky. So you got you got it going on to where, this is where the marinade. This is what it is. Um, 
People will say two hours, an hour, three hours, whatever. I disagree with that. I feel like the people that do it for about an hour or 30 minutes, three hours, whatever it is, I feel like when I eat their sam their smoked salmon, that I'm 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 eating a smoke on the outside of the fish. So once you get into the the core part of it, it it just tastes like salmon. It just it's like no different. So you can literally like scrape it off, and then you're back down to your salmon. So um, the cuts, which is I'll show when I get into here, make a big difference too. But I feel the longer you let it marinate, and so like right now it's nine o'clock at night, somewhere in there. I'll like to let it marinate till tomorrow, and when I get off work, about five ish or so. So it's a it's a good probably about 14, 12 hours, whatever it is, somewhere in there. But that's what I like to do: is the more the better. Be and then it seeps more inside of all over into uh, the salmon. And I don't like to make the cuts really big, like huge. And I know a lot of people do that. They'll make cuts really long or wide or whatever. And I, I just don't like that because it doesn't seep into the salmon itself. So I will make thinner cuts and then I'll get make sure. So when you bite into it, you're like, ah, oh, it's all in there and the smoke, you can taste everything. And so um, I'm kind of going more, I'm starting to yap around so a little bit more. So. This is the marinade I use, whether I'm doing my jerky, the smoked salmon, whatever, it's the same. But I wanna let everybody know too, though, is that I do not use the same sheds. I have a salmon shed in the back, and I have the jerky shed in the front. They're totally, completely different. I don't want jerky tasting like salmon, and I don't want salmon tasting like jerky. So they're not even the same. They're not even near each other, so Keep that in mind is that if you're doing something like multiple things, whether you're doing salmon and elk or whatever you're doing, buffalo, that you don't keep the salmon by that. You don't smoke the salmon anything near where you want to because you don't want uh, your, or even marinating it, you don't want to store it near it because it's going to end up turning, smelling like uh, your, uh, your jerky is going to taste or smell like salmon and your salmon is going to so anyways, uh, make sure that you keep them apart from each other at all times. Don't use the same sheds at all. Never do that at all. So you're like, oh, I can just run some salmon through my jerky shed. Nope, don't do it. Uh, or vice versa. Don't not do it. You'll ruin the both of them and you're going to have concoction of salmon and jerky or whatever. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to start getting ready. As you guys can see, I have... The jar is all set out now. We got our marinade set out. Our next step is gonna be to cutting the salmon up, which is I'll move all this stuff out and then we'll move the, uh, the uh, marinade over and then we can get started on doing all that. And um, I'm hoping, I'm showing everybody uh, something maybe new. I don't know if it's new. Maybe somebody can give me tips too what I'm doing, but this is how I do it. It's how I have learned. I've been self-taught pretty much on everything I've done. So it's just a crash course. And then you're like, you, uh, you'll figure out your, I don't want to say denominations, maybe your weight or anything that you're going to do so that you can figure out how you want to best make jerky, salmon, in this case, smoked salmon. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to wrap it up and then the next step we're gonna to get to is cutting up the salmon and the slices, and then we'll be putting it into the marinade. And so, all right, stay tuned. So now we've progressed to our cutting part of the salmon. So we've gone over pulling, pulling out the, the jars, uh, cleaning the lids and everything else, and the jars are over here. Now, one of the things too, <clears throat> that I want to share with everybody is that when you are vacuum packing your salmon, make sure that you always saran wrap it. Now I just pulled it out and it does not puncture, no holes in it. And then I sometimes get kind of a little bit more crazy and I even wrap it twice because, so let's just say it breaks so, and you gotta be gentle when you can't, I watch people and I was like, you can't vacuum pack 
and then slam your your vacuum packs around you have to set them in so if you're if, if you're taking your vacuum pack you don't just throw it into your freezer anywhere you set it in you set it in now cj's is the other one i always get it after because they flip the boxes over and they slam them down i'm like Dude, you just probably popped probably about half of a, half of my summer sausage or pepperoni sticks. CJ's, if you're watching this, you need to tell your associates like fix that stuff because that's not acceptable. Uh, so make sure when you're putting it in there that you're doing it lightly. Now the other thing is too is when you're pulling them out of the freezer, don't be ripping them, especially because you don't know if you're going to use the one underneath of them too. So this is what I always suggest and uh, is to uh, saran wrap them. And you'll see when I pull them out, these are all saran wrapped. Now these, these, these uh, Ziploc, or not Ziplocs, but these bags, when you're doing a the vacuum, these vacuum packs are not cheap. So when, you, when you're done with these, maybe cut them off and then clean them out and then recycle them that's what we always do so uh, this is what I'll do I'll chop them off probably chop that one off and then rinse them out and then dry them out and then redo them so there's another way to save money because those are these are crazy expensive I just I just just don't I just dislike how everything's expensive so you can tell we did a good job on these ones these ones are summers so these are summer salmon and they look really good. They held up. Then there's the other fish that were, uh, I don't know, they were uh, not summers, they were springers or basically dogged out. So uh, the tails were uh, turning. Dogged out, well, you'll hear me use dogged out a lot. And dogged out means is basically the salmon is done. Like it's no longer having. Uh, it's lost all of its color to it. So one of the things too, I'm lazy, so I don't pull out these bones. So that's another reason why you want to saran wrap it when you do it. So now we're going to do, now we're cutting our fish. So anybody remember about the tail? So the tail is basically the, the piece that you want to give to the person you love the most. So but don't forget, these are very important because they don't have bones or nothing like that. It's like it's like the other way is like when you make bread you give the end the end of the person you love the most so it's a big honor to get that piece so when I'm cutting these now I'm just only going I don't know that's probably about an inch and a half or whatever to give you an idea and that's all I'm going and then I don't know if whether I want to make you guys sit here and watch me cut all this up because that might be boring I don't know Maybe I can keep yapping away to keep everybody entertained, uh, but make sure you're not sawing when you're cutting. That's another thing everybody does. And once, if you're starting to saw, sharpen your knife. I'm always gonna say it over and over and over again. If you're tired, take a break. It's hard to tell people to take your break. So here's our, and so I don't, I don't like to do them in those big sections. Like honestly, I just like it. So I feel like when I cut them in my salmon, <clears throat> even when they're thick like this, they will they they will marinate a way a lot better than the way people will do them. They'll be like, oh, oops, I get crazy. They'll be like, oh, chunk, 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 and then we or the whole fillet, and I'm like, how can you? It's all you're gonna taste. Like I said before, all you're gonna taste. So here goes to the mother-in-law, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband. That's the highest honor is to give somebody that piece of meat. So now we're getting into the chunk. So this is our marinade, getting it going. And this is, uh, this salmon actually is, uh, uh, a June hog. I caught it in my. I caught this these salmon in my hoop nets that I'm just learning how to do too. Self-taught again because it's 
You know, I just feel like it's important that you teach people regardless. You need to teach everybody how to do this. If you don't teach anybody, let alone your kids or anybody, how to do all this stuff, then it's going to get lost. So I always feel it's important that that's kind of why I'm starting to do all these things because I never was taught this. I didn't know how to do it. I sat there and watched the library video how to cut a note. Actually, it was a deer. All day I sat there and then watched it. And that's how I learned how to cut. My dad said, you be shooting stuff, then you need to learn how to take care of it. And you know, there's nothing wrong with saying that you don't know how to do it. Then learn, learn how to do it, ask. So I tell everybody, if you don't know what you're doing, ask. Ask, what do I do, help me. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. All right, there we go. Look at that one. That's another one. Dynamite. So, I'll just kind of pop through these real quick for you. Uh, the other thing is I get asked about my knives. Like, the knives I'm using, uh, these are actually the bubble blades. These are the seven. Are these the seven inch ones? These are seven inch fillet knives. Uh, I use them for both elk and deer, not like together or nothing. I don't do that to um, mix them up together or anything like that. So this one, you can tell this one's a later fish. I would not like probably give that one away. I'd probably smoke it first, but I'll go quicker. I mean, oops, starting to. So I'm starting to get filled up over here, actually. So uh, once normally when I start getting my pot filled up, that normally means I will fill up my uh, all of my jars. And I'm doing half pints. So when people ask me, half pints is it, when you ask for a case. Cases, that's the other tricky thing. Cases are not like you think as a 24 pack. Cases are 12. So that's another thing when you're dealing with canning and everything. A case is 12, not a half rack. We're getting there, looking good. Look at that, that's where you want. You wanna be plumb full. And as it settles down, then you gotta keep an eye on that, but because I want, I wanna make sure I have enough fish, but normally what I'll do is I'll break out another one and do another marinade so that I'm not taking up an hour because I'll sit here and talk forever with everybody so and I'll do these real quick get them out done actually I'm not gonna stick those in there no more because I feel like that's full it's pretty cool it's pretty awesome actually and then I'll take my last one out should we do it backwards the opposite one thing too is is that when you're doing your fillets before you vacuum pack them get all the blood off of it get all the garbage that's off of it because the blood seems to make it taste not so good. And plus it doesn't vacuum pack so good, it spoils quicker. So make sure you get that all off of there. That's another one of my recommendations. You can learn it the hard way or you can listen to me and not do it. <laughs> then there's a tail. So right now we are putting everything into to be marinated. So we are uh, not going to be processing anything right now we're not going to move forward with this until tomorrow because tomorrow we'll be able to take the next step after it's marinated for 12 or so more hours or anything like that and then we'll put it be putting them gently into the jars and i'll go more into depth about, uh, about that to uh making sure when you put them in there to clean the tops off to get the seals everything done I will try to do my best to put everything together to set you up for um, success uh, because that's what I always want to do is when I'm teaching people something, I don't want to teach you the wrong way or shortcuts. I want to teach you, maybe it might be long and boring, but at the same time, if you feel like you can fast forward it or anything like that, then that's always cool. But then when I always do that, I just end up rewinding. I'm like, God, I missed it. So I can show everybody what's going to go happen. This is one of the most exciting parts is that after it marinates, it's starting to put it in there. And then I'll, I'll break down the pressure cooker and into the 
how you should be putting them in there, handling the jars and uh, the, basically everything else like that. So until we get into tomorrow, so in tomorrow's next step, we'll be getting the salmon that's marinated. Uh, actually, we'll be taking it out to the smoke shed, so it'll be smoked. So we got a we got a process to go, and I I promised myself that I would do every show everybody correctly, and then the uh, the the long process it takes, so that we all understand the dedication it takes from beginning to end to doing something like this, you know, and that we respect our fish and everything like that. And so, well, I'll see you guys tomorrow when we start the next process of smoking the fish. All right. This is probably what we weren't expecting was uh, snow. <laughs> it's not, but it started snowing a lot, so one of the things I bought my rack out and I just came out so uh, we get to do smoked salmon in snow so I'm gonna try to hurry it and get it done as quick as possible but uh, one of the ways too is that we'll probably keep our our salmon somewhat sooner I don't know if I have enough to fill up the whole rack uh, that's gonna be fine so I'll try to get it done real quick yeah just like that snowstorm moved in and then next thing you know I thought I was gonna have a nice cool night to lay salmon out and then nope and then it got dark because of the clouds so I apologize for not having very good lighting but I really wanted to get this done to show everybody regardless it's at night and now we're in the snow so now you don't get to see my visualizations of anything but I'll try to take it over there to show everybody from moving it. After I move it, I'll have to show show what it's like. And uh, I, I'm kind of giving them. I'm not. I'm gonna have a lot of room, so I'm not gonna get. Uh, I'm hoping I'm gonna have a lot of room, so I'm not gonna try to. Uh, Put them too close, I guess, is what I'm saying. I don't know, I might be able to fill this whole rack up. One of the ways that we're gonna be able to do it in our, is by just taking my salmon out, quit messing around, I guess. I'd like just to dump this out, but I still have, I still have a, some of the, marinade in there. I'm just going to pull it all out and get it out of the way. If it doesn't snow a foot while I'm out here trying to do this. <laughs> and these are going to be canned, so some of these are going to need to be broke down again. So have to make sure you wear your bag brace because doing jerky and then doing salmon on these racks are two different weights. Jerky is really not that too bad. It tires you out, you know, after doing so many racks. Well, just one rack of salmon that's full. You better have your back brace or do all your bending correctly so you don't hurt yourself. That's what will happen. So, always trying to be safe. Safety. You don't really have to do it this way. A lot of people ask the same way when I can my elk. Why do I, why do I brown it first? Well, I like the texture. The texture is the number one reason. I feel like it keeps the, the flavor, not the flavor, the juices in it more too, I guess. But I, overall, I just like the texture. I don't like the texture and the taste. I'd have to say are two different things when you just throw it into a can. It tastes really waterlogged to me when you do it that way. So I like to take some of that juices out of there and then and I got some of my bellies that are out here too so I'm gonna do a full rack on this whatever I can if I run out of room as far as canning goes then all I'll simply do is just uh, vacuum pack everything else probably eat sooner than what, what 
the sole purpose of canning is for is to have it long term and whatnot. So vacuum pack, not so much. All right, so now I got everything pretty much laid out. That I'm gonna get on the rack of everything, basically. I don't wanna go too, I got another rack. Now I'll use my pepper, even my pepper shows you how. And then I'm gonna pepper the top. I mean, if you wanna use something else too, like a basil leaf or Maybe Johnny's. I don't know if you're going to put Johnny's on here, but I like just doing some pepper on it to top it off. It's got a nice taste to it. Kind of a little cute. It might be too crazy. So, all right, let's get my fingers under there. I'm going to take it to the fire. Oh. So now, we'll head over here and then get a better look at our, our salmon. And then we'll do the next rack right there too. So, and there's the fire. So, it's pretty hypnotizing. But there we go. So now what we'll do is do the texture and then we'll get, uh, We'll get started on this and then take it back in after. So now we've already been out here and uh, we just picked up where we left off and the fire is starting to kind of simmer down and you know this the salmon has started to um, got a little bit of the the edge to it now just getting the texture on it right now where I like it to be the texture is what I feel is where it's really nice and it holds in a little bit more of the moisture and the juices in and whatnot. So I'm at this point going to start working, pulling everything back off. And the thing about it too is like when I try not to cough, 
the smoke is still heavy so I like to have it like this so whew. I had to regroup on that and that smoke is just harsh so once I uh, right now I'm gonna start pulling everything off and right now it's kind of it's pretty brittle yet so or not brittle I should say flaky so I can take it apart a little bit better and and then put it into the jars so now I'm gonna go grab all the rest of the stuff to take everything off and then start getting ready to load up the fish so that we can put it into the jars and then once we put it in the jars then we'll get ready to start canning and then we'll be we're we're on the home stretch I guess we can say now we're we're getting to the part where we're gonna feel pretty proud of ourselves right now it's another step but we're getting there and it's looking pretty good if you ask me so I let the fire go out slowly but you can see it's just ripping yet so it takes its toll on your lungs too no joke with the smoke so all right the next step it will be will be inside put it in the, the, the jars so right now we are uh, slowly getting ready we just filled up our we filled up our pots we have our, our water starting to warm up normally by, by the, about the time that we start to uh, get everything canned and whatnot it's time to the water will be going about right where we want it dial it down and we have some elk stew going on too while while they're getting ready to cook and then um, once we bring it in and get everything going we'll start getting to like uh, show everybody how we do this I really hate using our stove when we do this because it really takes its toll on it I'd rather just be outside doing all this stuff so it's more accessible open area too so we'll be getting ready to get down on this uh, it's our next step is to get this warmed up and we're almost there like I said we're on the, the home stretch and then once we get these ripping then we'll go from there too so show everybody exactly how we get it done now now when we went outside and or inside and grabbed a, our pan so we can pull this out and then we can start taking it out so we just firmed everything up it's not if we're just gonna eat it, it we, you don't want to just eat it right now. But what we've done is just got the texture. We've hardened everything, and then you can tell it's kind of even like if it, like if we weren't doing it, it would still be pretty close to me being flipped around if it be done up. So we'll start pulling all these off, and we'll probably go in. Uh, trips I guess you could say several trips to come out here because there's no point of smashing it all up and then taking it all in one shot and then you don't really need to do that because we're gonna we're gonna be uh, putting them in the jars so there's no reason so we'll just kind of grab everything and like the bigger pieces I'll let that sit there for a second but it's flaking but I don't want to I think we pulled, we're pulling this off, normally about one fire, for when we're doing this, it's about one fire. Uh, it will have, and then it's okay to run it hot too, because it's cold out, so you have less oxygen. So in this case, because it's middle of winter time, so it's okay to run that fire hot. And then plus, it, when you only run one fire, it's not like you're gonna, burn everything or anything like that like if it was summer that wouldn't be a good idea you want a little fire and we're using really dry alder so it takes off a little bit better and uh, so we'll be able to pull this all off and then we'll have to take at least a couple trips and cut it out one more time but I don't know if I want to put that all on on for us is like to do several trips because we'll get the point I'll probably just go in and then grab another tray and then bring the rest out. And this one, this big guy just does not want to comply. That looks so yummy though. I like that. Actually, 
so we're actually we're doing pretty good. Everything's coming off smoothly. Sometimes I have to fight with everything. Like this one, that one I'm kind of fighting with it. Then it causes a mess and then... But we're, we're rather like pulling these all off. Look at that. This looks perfect. So it's not... When we're canning them too, you don't want to suck all the the moisture out of it too because you want that moisture in there but at the same time you don't want to have a whole bunch of moisture where it's just like anything when you have it will dry it out if, if, if you have it will dry it out if you take too much smoke it will dry it out but if you don't do enough then you're gonna have a bunch of moisture in there I mean these are summers they don't have as much oil as springers do and people say the smokers, but I just hate doing smokers when they're like, they spawned out. Oh, they're just so dry. I don't know what to do with them. I like doing them when they're not spawned out. I'm gonna say smokers, I'm gonna eat We're getting there. So we're gonna come, we're gonna come back out and then we'll grab the rest because we're starting to get kind of stocked up, so. Um, on the next segment, we'll be back in the house, and then we'll put them in the jar. So, this is where we're at. We're making sure we're giving that texture, that firm base around it, and then so it's not just all mushy or anything like that, too. So, all right. The next step, we'll be inside, putting our salmon in the jars. We just finished pulling off all the salmon that we have out there and this is what it's come to it's a mountain of deliciousness and we'll have another word but okay so now we're going to be starting on transferring everything from there into all of our jars and we'll get them loaded up then once we get them all loaded up into our jars then we will be transferring them over to our pressure cookers so that we can uh, finalize everything almost then we're almost there this is the case so it's a long grueling process but it's going to be rewarding it always is especially when you have this much salmon look at that it's coming out perfect everything's coming together so so at this time we've started to slowly put all the salmon into each one of the jars and we're methodically like going through it all trying to make sure we get it done and I feel right now at this point that we're getting to that it's looking pretty legit so we are have all four of our cases filled up and then we move over to our our spare parts that we have right there and um, which we have more we have more cans and jars and whatnot so we move down to here too so we have a lot of stuff going on and we have just literally jarred them up now we're gonna be adding a little bit of water to it and then we're gonna get ripping now it's the final thing we're gonna get done it's looking delicious all right, at this time now we're starting to slowly put the lids on all of the jars well I should say some of the jars making sure they're clean and to breeze away from them it might be a little bit wet but and making sure everything somewhat filled up so as you go along you're gonna make sure you're gonna be wiping all the stuff away from the top and then start adding the lids and make sure they're lined up quickly not quickly correctly I should say and then put them put them on so this is what it's starting to look like once we get it on when once we get the, the lids on too and everything we're gonna transfer it all over to of our fundamentals but you know there's no 
don't need to get into a hurry because once you start getting into a hurry, you make mistakes, you forget things. So right now we come too far to forget something. Start cinching them up. Make sure, make sure it's clean on the top, much as it is. Just kind of like just a little bit. No good. Back off of it if it's something like that ever happens. And then lightly tighten it. It's a long press process too, so don't be in no hurry because it takes a long time. It does. So all you gotta do is be repetitious about it. And if it fouls up, then back off of it and then start over. has no water so I'm gonna skip over that one for a sec. Uh, I added water to everything, filled up the air pockets and there were uh, uh, so it's not the salmon's not too dry. What are we gonna do with this? That's what everybody's asking right now. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What would you do if you did all this work? Let's do a poll. If you do all this work, all this fish that you caught, you cut it all up, you do something like this, and then now you're finally done. You figured out what you're gonna do. No, let's do a poll. You eat it, you give it away to your loved ones. Hold on to it. Okay, for some reason this is totally weird to me. That was weird. Let me know what you guys think. What would you guys do with all this? It's a repetitious rhetorical question I guess too. Everybody is asked that. Well, what would you do? Well, I want to eat it when I'm hunting. That's what I want to do because when you're hunting, you're not fishing. And you want salmon. And when you're fishing for salmon, you want elk. So, or jerky or whatnot. So, we always, this is the whole reason we store it away for hard times for anybody, ourselves. So. But let me know what everybody does with it all. And this, uh, we're being abundant because we have two, we have a lot of salmon to do this and then we still have two pressure cookers that need all this. So this, we have extra on the backside too that, that we have more we haven't showed everybody the rest of our jars or anything like that too. And we have enough to make another another batch too. But we're only showing everybody partially what we do. Systematic. Put your finger in the middle, lock it down. Shift that up a little bit and then move on to the next one. So, all right, I know it's kind of get repetitious. I've already done like 30, 40 jars. So, we're gonna cut this off and then we're gonna proceed to once we finish this up. Then we're gonna go move over to when we put them in the pressure cooker. So, hang tight. All right. So now we're using our our our. Uh, I don't want to say muffin pan, but it actually is. That's what we use to transport all of our all of our uh, cans, jars over there. Uh, it's kind of old, dragging them around in one hand. So this is what you can actually go online and order other stuff to uh, where they have one that you can carry 
multiple besides this. So now we're gonna take it over to our pressure cooker and then we're gonna start adding it into there. So gotta get her done. Kinda lost track of my jar. I was like, where'd it go? So we're gonna start putting them in there. Sure they're not smashing and bouncing around on each other. Start adding them into the pot. Now the one thing too is, is that once you start putting them in here, is that you don't want to say once you put them in there, then you're like, oh, 90 minutes. You want to wait till it starts percolating to say. Okay, now that's when it that's when it starts. Does that make sense to everybody? Because a lot of people be like, "I got him in there, ninety minutes." It's not how it works. So now we're gonna go back over and grab the next pack. And there's the key cat. So these aren't hot, so I don't have to use my prong. Sit these in there and then we'll get the first batch ripping so I don't know why I used the prongs the first time but now we can move it back over my cat wants to be part of this he's like oh why am I not involved when he's doing smoked salmon Make sure you guys at this time is you feed, make sure you water for your kitty cats and your dogs. Making sure they're taken care of because I felt guilty checking on my cat and then he, he's pissed at me. He didn't have no water. I thought I had him watered and I thought I had him fed and he's like, yeah, he's still mad. But you're in here doing a video about smoked salmon and you're not feeding me. All right, so now we got everything in there. So we're gonna move on to the next ones. We'll get them capped out. And then once we get it done up, when it's percolating, make sure it's not like really rasping, like going back and forth, all obnoxious. It's just like a slight So uh, once I get these put in, we'll try to do another little clip where we can take care of that too. So, all right. So, we finally have our pressure cooker starting to kick off. And the thing is, it needs to stay right about there, nice and comfortable. Not like it's blowing the horn or blowing the gasket. It needs to stay right about there where it's really comfortable. So, once it starts circulating, that's where you start your 90 minutes for your fish, and then, or for your belt or whatever. So you'll notice the second one has not started taking it off. So therefore, it's loaded up, and you do not start your timing yet. So we're looking at 10 o'clock. We're looking at 10 o'clock. So by the time this one gets done in 90 minutes, it will be about 11.30. So make sure you're aware of that. Start it when it's percolating. Not when you put them in there. And then make sure that it's not going crazy. So see how it's starting to pick up? I'm going to have to slowly back off on this one too. Because it's starting to go a little bit of a fire. So back it off and let it simmer. See, so you hear it? That's music to my ears. And anybody that does canning, that's music to your ears. Even, you, even though we'll be putting it over there. 
It'll still pop off later. See? There it goes. There it goes. Oh, it takes lots of love, lots of dedication, lots of work, lots of help. And all of a sudden, you're going to succeed at this. This will be the payoff, the dividends, and everything it took care of. The long process, everybody. It's a long process. So, through the whole process of everything, this is what it takes. Uh, to make sure you do smoke salmon and then if you watch them uh, it takes a lot of work it does it stresses everybody out but it's rewarding and when you hear them pop off that means you do a good job